Good afternoon everyone, this is Pradgom here today for part 3 of 5M Fully Explained. Today you will be learning how to port forward your 5M server to allow access from anyone. Firstly, you will be setting a static IP for your host device. This is done either through Windows or through your router. Both methods work fine. You will then be with that static IP, you will then use that to open the ports on your router, allowing access for everyone. Firstly, what you want to do is you would like to open command prompt and search IP config. From here, you've got your IPv4 address and your default gateway. Both of these are needed for later. So what you would like to do is you need to make a note of both this address here as well as this address here. This IPv4 is the address of your host device, which you're on now. And then the default gateway is the address of your router, which you will connect to, to be able to then open the ports. Next step you'd like to do is you'd like to open settings, network and internet, then either ethernet or Wi-Fi, depending on your connection. You will then click change adapter options. And then you will have multiple things come up here usually. And then you want to click on the first one. Other ones that aren't being used will have a cross next to them like here. So you right click, properties, IPv4, and properties again. And you have to select use a following IP address. So you set it yourself. Then you set it to what you got out of IP config earlier. So mine is 192.168.1.10. Then you'd like to set your subnet mask to this. This is the default subnet mask, which everyone uses. Then you would like to set your default gateway, which you also got earlier. So mine again is 192.168.1.254. Then what I do here is I use Google's DNS. So this for me has provided me a more stable connection, which I find is always better. So if you'd like to do the following, it is 8.8.8.8, .8 followed by 4.2.2.1. This is not required. However, I found this to be helpful for myself. The alternative method to setting a static IP is through your router directly. So here you want to open up your browser, and you want to head to your default gateway from earlier. Here you will, you will need the admin password and username to be able to change the settings. This is either on the back of your router or it will be the default settings which are applied from the factory. To be able to get them, you can go to portforward.com, go to the router section, then find the make and model of your router in here. Mine is a BT Smart Hub. And you can scroll down and you'll be able to find that default admin and password here. That's all you will need to log in. So you can then go back to your default gateway. And then you want to find the devices page. And find your device. And then change settings. This is where I have to log in. Then what you are doing here is always use this IP address and then you will change it to whatever you got earlier. This interface is always different for everyone. So if you're confused by this, you can either go back to the first method or you can go back to the website and there is a tutorial for every router of how to set a static IP on there. Here, which goes back to the first method, first method, which is the easiest one available. For the second part of this tutorial, we'll be going to the default gateway to connect to your router. And you'll have to use your administrator username and password at some point to be able to log in and make changes. This can be done by going to the back of the router and looking at the administrator password and username, which is there. This will be then used to log on. If not, you can go to portforward.com list of all routers 
and you can find the make and model of your device. So I have a BT Smart Hub. And then scroll down to get the default username and password. Once you've got that, you can then go back here and then you'll locate the port forwarding page. This can be in devices, port forwarding or settings. For me, it is in devices page. Then I will locate my device, which I have here. Then go to the port forwarding page. As you can see, I already have rules here for an open NAT type on Xbox One, but this is a separate device itself. So what you'll do is you'll create a new port forwarding rule. You can call this 5M. And you select the address, select the device or put into your address. Then the port you want to enter is 30120. And you want to create both a TCP and a UDP rule. What I do is I make two individual rules as I have experienced many problems in the past with making a TCP UDP rule. So I just make two separate ones just to be sure. But you can happily use a TCP UDP rule and it should work fine. But if not, just make two separate ones. If you are unable to find the port forwarding section on your router, what you can do is you can go back to the port forwarding page and you'll be able to scroll down and there will be clear instructions of how to port forward but for any device in here as you can see you can go back here and we can go and find a Netgear router say So we can choose this router here. As you can see, it's still got that default stuff. And then it will show you port forwarding section, step by step, how to do it. So as you can see here, there's a tutorial for Xbox Live. If you want, you can go by applications, games, whatever it is, and you'll be able to find anything here. Once you have done this, you are ready to carry on with setting up your server. This will then allow people to connect using the IP address of your home or server, as well as the port on the end of it. If you have any questions, make sure to come in, ask us in the comments or join our Discord link below. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and we'll see you in the next episode.